Is this Cruiser's swan song then? Is this his, is this his last so, run? Yeah, yeah, I think so. It was uh, he, <laughs> he texted me on Sunday, eh? Barbar's question mark, because uh, we obviously got knocked out on Saturday night. Uh, and I was like, no, you're not selected. As if they'd pick you, but yeah, they <laughs> they um, they let him meet me. <laughs> Andy I'm in the, I'm in the fucking room. <laughs> Hold on, yeah, just just so we can get his clear, he's, he's right behind you, isn't he? He's right here. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do this in the lobby, but I was like, nah, you know what? I'll, we'll do a tag, we'll tag team in here. Hello, and uh, welcome to the Rugby Pass Offload Podcast with Max Laheef looking lovely in Thailand, Ryan Wilson looking lovely in his study in Glasgow. Uh, later on in the show, we'll be joined by Ozzy and La Rochelle Locke, Will Skelton, uh, before we get into an incredible weekend. Of playoff rugby, boys, some some weird and wonderful activities across your social media. How how are you both doing? Oh, very good. Look at him. Look at him. Very annoying. Smug. Oh, with vitamin oh D's. Give us the abs. Hey, give us. Hey. Give us the abs. Give us the abs. Oh my! God. Unbelievable! It's like they're made in a laboratory. No, that's, that's what I look dangerous. like when I take my top off. It's yeah, very dangerous. Oh, Tell you right. what, the mosquitoes here though. Absolute plague. <laughs> I've been I've been snacked. Oh, you know what That's keeps you away, th- don't you? Citronella oil or what? Gin and tonic. Just hammer gin and tonics. Is that a thing? Yeah, that a thing? that's a, no, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, try it. No, for a man that spent his <laughs> for a man that spent his childhood in Thailand, Southeast Asia. Mate, right, I'm going to Google that. You, I reckon you might um, be onto something. It's uh, what's the stuff? What's the stuff which like glows up? You know, like when you have a gin and tonic there, it's almost like goes it glows, oh, yeah. and it's something in the tonic. It's got nothing to do with the gin, but there's no point in drinking tonic on its own. Oh, fascinating! Okay, I'll check that out. So something to do with what's in the tonic. Oh, for fuck's sake, what's it called? I remember by the end of it, but there's something in tonic which, uh, when you sweat it out, the midges don't like, and the mosquitoes. So, oh, so there's um, some kind of thing in the yeah. sweat like a metabolite you excrete from it but then obviously you just slam a load of uh, gin, gin in there as well for good measure sweet, yeah of course sweet. of course whilst, whilst you're here um oh yeah. max just flick it round so the viewers can see where you are so this is like um oh my god this is low tide right now but usually it comes right up and it's just wonderful it's like stepping into a bar for your home really really good bar. food's wonderful it's so cheap how good is it it's like 45 baht for a pad tie. That's mental. I had like to message you the other night pad. when you were having that lub guy. Oh, lub yeah. Guy. That, mate, that is. I, do you know what happened that night? You had a lub guy over there, and I made my missus go to the tie and get me a lub guy from the tie down the road because I yeah. felt like it's the lub. Nothing, <laughs> nothing on what you had, but oh my God, how good. The lab is just superb, but my God, it's weaponized. Laced with IEDs, that one. I almost died. But yeah, it was so good. The um, Bangla Road, lads, you were right. Wow. <laughs> wow. All sorts of absolute devilry is down that one. My God. Fantastic, though. Tell, Fantastic. tell me, come on, what's the weirdest thing you saw? I guess it was more the volume of the weirdest stuff I saw. It was more like how every second bloke's offering you a ping pong show, trying to get into them. And then there's like these like packs of women sort of in nothing roaming around, like standing on bars, trying to get you to come into the bar, uh, come, trying to get to come to their establishments. And then there's that, you know, that app, there's like an alley, which has got like gentlemen's clubs all down the side and everything's blocked off. Mark's, <laughs> like, Mark's like this, Mark's going like this. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going <laughs> And I was, I was like, like, and it's all just so sketchy. You're like, this is straight out of Blade Runner, like Ridley Scott Blade Runner. It's mad, like pure sci-fi vibes. Yeah, it was fascinating. Lads, I, I saw a big, wait, can I just say one thing, actually? I saw a massive black tip reef shark yesterday. And then I got like stuck in a reef and like the water got real close and there's urchins everywhere here. And I got punctured by sea urchins. My God, that was a nightmarish. Like full on anxiety episode. Panic. <laughs> like, lads, I'm out on an offshore reef from this island. There's urchins everywhere. It was like m- a minefield. I like looked around me and I was like, they're this close to you. Cause I was in like the shallows. 
because I couldn't stand up, obviously, because it's just completely littered with the hedgehogs of the sea. And I was just like, I might, this might be it. I might go down by sea urchins. This could be the end. But um, yeah, we got through that. This has had to pick up the pieces. PTSD all around. Great times. You, oh, you yeah, must, you, oh, you must have your paddy scuba diving license, don't you? Nah, my family does. But at the time when I wanted to do it, my, I had like terrible, flo- uh, terrible, um, what's that thing that um, peak flow? So my peak flow wasn't asthma. good enough for it. That so they test for your asthma. Yeah. <laughs> I've got little crisp ones. Yeah. I've, I've actually scuba dived in Thailand. Very good. Yeah, mate. It, looked, it would be amazing. I, was, mate, I couldn't believe I saw a shark that big. I was actually sketching a bit. I was like, if that shark was angry at me, it'd, it'd probably be all over. It was a big fish. It was the biggest fish I've been in the water with, like that was close to me. I was sketching a bit. I was like, mate, that is massive. And how far were how far out were you? Like, were you near land? No, bro. Literally, like in the they're in yeah, like in the bay. Like, oh, that's how man. close this is. It's nuts, <laughs> mate. It's a crazy place. Can you imagine anyway, how, de- how depressing that would be? Where we'd have to be like, unfortunately, we've lost Max. Here, <laughs> here's Freddie Burns. <laughs> <laughs> Max had an allergic reaction to some sea urchins, so didn't pack an epipen. God, they suck. By the way, they do sting. That's Where did they thing. sting you on the ass? Just in my big, in my big foot, oh. in my big toe, my left foot. In my sorry. big, my big foot. <laughs> in, in my, my big, big foot. package. It's getting, it's getting knocked off by sea urchins Woof. in Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so Awful. good. Max, we've been, been enjoying there. your your sort of videos of the of the rope skipping, dancing fighting, whatever you oh, call yeah. it, the, the visually stunning stuff. Take us through what you were doing. Have you mastered such an art that Dave Atwood actually uh, ruined before? It's not a fucking <laughs> art. It's skipping without jumping over That's the rope. Skipping, what... yeah. That's what they tell me. Uh, my, my friend introduced me to it about a couple of years ago now. And um, ever since then, I could never put it down. It's just too much fun. But essentially, it's meant to be a sort of a biomechanical conditioning tool. But I think it's just fun. I'm not sure if it is or isn't, but it's really good crap. Very cerebral. Puts you in your flow state. Um, it's, it's it's nice. It's nice for the brain, for sure. I'm, guess, I'm guessing you just got a rope there. You, you didn't take the rope with you, did you? No, I took the rope with me. Oh, my God. You've lost the plot, man. <laughs> yeah. Plot. We're losing following. <laughs> so, so hold on. So you're packed, ready? You, right. All right. Babe, I'm going, babe, you seen my rope anywhere? I'm, I'm, we're going to Thailand. Where's my rope? <laughs> Yeah, my message was not happens. Yeah, Look at this big idiot on the beach, running around, dancing with a rope. Yeah, um, it happens. I bet people already see you and go, "Shit, look at the nick of that bloke!" And then they're like, "What's he doing with that rope?" And then they're like, what, "What's he doing with that rope?" <laughs> you do you do get some second takes? Yeah. Oh, I like <laughs> Oh, uh, he's just, just swinging it around his body. Careful. <laughs> what? what? What is this idiot doing? My God. <laughs> big, uh, nunchucks. Big, do you do big it your, kung fu oh, panda on the beach. Do you do it in your budgie smugglers? Oh, of course. Yes. Of yes. course, mate. Max, speaking of your missus, is she a big fan? And I think, I've been thinking this a little bit, of just sitting there for hours filming you working out in different guises across the beach on your holiday. Wait, wait a sec, wait a sec. It's give and take. There's girlfriends and boyfriends of Instagram, my guy. I I take some photos for her. She takes some videos for me. So it's okay, it's fine. But yeah, probably not, probably not. She's very patient. She's very patient. As you can imagine, yeah, you've got to deal with a bit of weirdness every now and again with myself. She's very sane. She really balances me out, thankfully. I need that. (laughs) I need that. <laughs> Can't have too much esoteric on both sides, can we? Yeah. Right. Let's just a quick word. You're obviously getting quite a lot of shit from everyone last week after a disastrous final game for Glasgow. What have things kind of improved since? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Still ducking and diving. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a horrible week. I, uh, the one that I speak to you Tuesday. And then we went in on the Wednesday and Thursday and um, we actually got beasted. We ended up doing fitness. <laughs> and the, the S&C coach was like, this isn't a punishment. This is, um, you know, we're just trying to make sure we stay on top of things. I'm, like, what? I'm trying to tell the boys, boys, this isn't, a, you know, this isn't a punishment. 
and everyone's doing down ups on the pitch outside. We're like, oh god! But you just there's you couldn't say anything. You just had to take it. But it was all right. We got out into the community on Friday. Did some stuff at the rugby clubs around Glasgow. Went out, did some tart and touch with the kids and stuff. So that was good to get out there. And when you actually go out and you're with, you know, the problem is you sit there and you look at social media. You're like, oh, everyone hates us. These people despise us for losing a game of rugby. But actually, when you get out to the rugby clubs around Glasgow and you see the actual fans, um, you know, everyone's pretty good. So we did that on Friday, which was good. Go and speak to a few of the kids and that and played a bit of touch. Mate, my back was wrecked after it. It was harder than the game. Um, but did that and now I'm off. Now I'm fully off. So, uh, yeah, it's over. We just got uh, six weeks to ponder on it. Thanks. So please don't bring it up again. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I won't. <laughs> Uh, I mean, right, you must be pretty happy seeing Leinster lose at home to the Bulls and, and finish trophyless this season. Uh, did anyone see that result coming? I don't think they did, no. I genuinely don't think they did, especially the fact that the Bulls had to sort of six-day turnaround, travel over to Leinster. I um, I think it was a bit of a shock, but bloody hell, the Bulls were good. Like They're just re- like relentless with what they do and... Leinster were good in the first opening stages, and then suddenly the balls just pulled away. They were, they were on form. So no, it was good. It was good. It was a good match. But yeah, I don't think anyone saw a uh, an all South African final, especially at the beginning of the season. And then yeah. you've seen how they how they improved towards the end. Hey, listen, it's all you know. That's all that matters. Right at the end is how you finish, not how you start. It's the best bit of that was watching. Um the South African social media, like all the fans just flying into Ireland. I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> horrible winners are the South Africans. <laughs> <laughs> first year, hey, first year. Do say we have the good teams in the final. Standard yeah. okay. People just, give it, oh, come on. <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> People giving it hard, like, oh, how many how many uh, spring boxes are in that Bulls team? Like, that's what they're all saying. Hey, no, no spring boxes in the Bulls <laughs> yeah, team, man. Yeah. And we still beat Ireland, though. Look at my butcher. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, it was fucking cracking me up. We've talked a lot about Leinster's sort of depth and incredible academy production line, let alone the fact they've got most of the Ireland starting 15. They've now lost their two biggest games and they're going to end up without a trophy for the first time in five years. Do we think there'll be a big inquiry or sort of moment of self-analysis or it's just a question of being beaten by a better team twice? I think it'll be a, it'll shape them, in my opinion. I think it's just a big year of getting better for them, in my like putting a positive spin on things. But yeah, what do you think? Yeah, no, I'm the same. You look at teams like... Rassin, who have made these big finals and not never quite made it in the big games. Leinster have done it before, haven't they? They've done it plenty of times. But like you said, it's yeah. a, there's a young team, and it like it like I know it's a bit of a cliche, but you know when they say, "Oh, you lose these big games, you learn from them." They will learn from them, and they'll be in a better place come next year, which is worrying, isn't it? But um, yeah, I just think, I mean, La Rochelle on the day were brilliant, and then Leinster again. Up against the Bulls, like I think it was Leo Cullen after the game spoke about it. it was like we just didn't have we need players eight nines tens on the day of a final or a semi final and and we didn't have that we had fives and sixes you know in in amongst some of the other players that played really well like Henshaw was brilliant um, so you need everyone firing all cylinders and they didn't quite get that on the day but and the other flip side was Bulls they were so good they were unbelievable so um, that'd be all right. But let, let's not worry about Leinster. They're fine. They're fine. <laughs> They're, okay. They're going to be okay. Um, be quick okay. Work, just to uh, touch on the other semi, an 85th minute try, Manny Lubot then striking a nerveless winning conversion as the Stormers clinch that dramatic 17-15 victory over Ulster to reach the URC final. A uh, bit of a viral debate on the internet. I, I, do, do we think the conversion actually went over? Oh, I think it went through. It has to have. You could, the, the touchies can't have got that wrong, can they? No, can they really? Yeah, it just looked, I think it was just a bit like towards the top and it gets a bit fruity when there's no post there. And it disappeared think... into the lighting, didn't it, on the TV? Yeah, yeah but the, the Ulster players straight away are like, you know, they're really? turning they around straight out? Well, the, you see the yeah. ones closest to the camera turning around and being like, that didn't, that didn't go, but then kind of accepting because the referee said it which, you know, you wouldn't find in football. But still, it was it was 
this didn't seem that clear cut. There was, do you know that what there was something out there online which was like we've got different angles of the ball going over. I never actually saw it, but uh, you've got to trust the officials on that one. You can't. I mean, we could, we we had one angle of it on the TV, and it didn't look like it made it on the TV. It didn't, and you were like, oh, that's missed. It's bloody missed it, but. Listen, the main thing on that game was Ulster have absolutely bombed that one. Like, do you know what I mean? The the Stormers yeah. lose the last ten minutes. They have to get that red card. Whether it was a red card or card or not, it doesn't really matter. It was he was going for ten minutes no matter what. Um, and then the Stormers had a couple lineouts the last ten minutes in their twenty-two. Ulster managed to turn it over, turn it over again. Exited. They just couldn't get out their own half. And uh, they should have, they should have managed to, to grind that one out. But the Stormers are too good, and again, that's home advantage, isn't it? So, um, yeah, unbelievable. But they all still will be kicking themselves for that one. I reckon they should have gone on and won that. Uh, quick prediction on the final. I reckon oh, the Stormers for me, if they're they're at at home with their own home crowd against the Bulls, they're very different teams. Bulls are like massively big pack. Um, but the storm is just electric. Like their back line is just terrifying. So um, I'm going stormers. Where are you going, Max? Yeah, stormers, stormers. I think they were just under firing quite badly against Ulster. Got got lucky, but got it done. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go with stormers. Uh, move on to the Prem semi-final. Saracen claiming a place in the final with that victory over London rivals Harlequins. A pretty bitter clash at living up to expectation emotions yeah. boiling over on occasion quite enjoyable to watch yeah it was decent wasn't it there were some shots a lot of cards but everyone was throwing themselves willy-nilly into each other it was class yeah a lot to play for a lot of bragging rights it was it was good stuff 80 minutes of head contacts yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much so much cte was being dished out i was like oh no just people headbutting each other left, right, and centre. Mental. <laughs> Clean off. I'm not. Yeah, like Jack Walker's one mate. He's just smeared his nose across his face. I was like, you. Poor, poor and you look. You look at Faz's back of his head. You're like, whose blood's that? <laughs> whose blood is that? <laughs> it's just all Jack Walker's. <laughs> oh, poor kid. And then like Big Bill getting yellow carded for getting absolutely dished up in the getting face. Sat and down. Cool. Like a game of musical that. chairs. Yeah. God. Yeah, that was Andre. that was a bit of a weird one, wasn't it? Yeah. And he was yeah, he was appealing, wasn't he, with the forearm to the ref as well on the way off. I was like, mate, you've 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 given it to him in the face as well, though. Mate, bumped there him in. He's getting absolutely bumped, and then the ref's like, yellow card, mate. Oh, cheers. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> salt, oh. salt in the wound. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, three oh. yellows for Saris. Again, you think that, you go, Quinn's, I oh, should have capitalised on that a bit more. But Saris were just too good, weren't they, towards the end? They were just too like consistent. They were just sticking to their game plan very well. I think Quinn's just got a bit loose around. But their like, scrum was so dominant. So you sort of like that Marcus Marcus Smith setting up. Um, who, scored, who scored in Danny that Kerr. second track? Danny Kerr. Danny Kerr, yeah, where, where DC went over off the back of such a ferocious scrum. So like Will Collier, Joe Marler doing it up front. But yeah, just uh, Saris just stuck to their guns the whole game. Um, just a bit more clinical in that regard. But man, it was so good to watch. Great fun. And, the, and then there was that like where it boiled over. It was a bit of a scrap. Yeah. Well, hold on a minute. So what, so what, like, listen, three yellow cards for people headbutting each other. Bill, Bill gets sat down and yellow carded. But they definitely... <laughs> There's definitely three clear as day punches thrown and nothing yeah. happened. I just think, I think he was like, if I card everyone here, this game's a complete debacle. <laughs> so he's just like, I'm just going to pretend it didn't, I'm just going to pretend they all pushed each other. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it should be. On there, bro. Genuine. I reckon he's like, no damage was really done in any of these punches. I just pretend they pushed each other because I've already handed out more cards than a goddamn blackjack dealer. So I've got to be, I've got to be slightly... <laughs> Owen slightly Farrell wary. gets up with blood pouring from his face and he's like, I've just been punched. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you see they keep coming up back up to each other during the break of play. Like, Simmons goes over to him. I, I would love to know what he was saying to him there. Like, what's going on? Um, but yeah, it was... Oh. Who was it who took the quick tap and just got carted backwards? And that's what kicked it off, wasn't it? Danny Kerr. 
<laughs> Danny Kerr. He's gone in. He's got absolutely denied. And then it's all just blown over. But it was already but getting who, there because there were so many head contacts. But who's the big four that was... It, you could see him. Bump, bump. Two, yeah, Matt two Simmons. From, yeah, with, okay. the, with the scrum out. Yeah, Simmons. Yeah, yeah he, he can get... He loves a bit of argy-bargy, to be fair to the bloke. Yeah, prob- but I don't know. He's lost it there, hasn't he? He's lost his head. Oh, he's lost his head, but it's he's clear lost his head. that he's thrown yeah. a couple of punches. And if they'd looked into it, I reckon there's a couple more yellow cards there. But do you know what? For once, I'll stick up for my old mate Faz. He's come up. He's not really moan- he's not really moaning about it. He, for a second, no, he's, he's like, not. Pretty sure I've just been digged in. And then he's, he's off. He took it up with the player rather than the ref, which I love. Yeah. Like, yeah. take it up with the player, not the referee. Because yeah, that's, that's what they were saying. They were just like, yeah. "Mate, you just punched me in the head twice in the back of the head." <laughs> what are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> Two cheap shots. But he's not giving it to the ref. Go and check it. Go and check it. Which fair yeah. play, Owen Farrell. Respect. Faz was secretly but, loving him anyway. Probably but, because he got should, away with the one earlier yeah, on. Yeah, should, should he have been, should he have yeah. been done? <laughs> so that's maybe it. Maybe All he's fair. thinking. Fair enough. I got away with mine. Come Let on, him man. get away with yeah. one. A very quick word on Danny Kerr being recalled to the England setup. That's a bit of a surprise. Is he Deserve. more gutted that he's not on the Barbars trip in Monaco? Yes, I think so. Probably. Probably, but also he, he's probably very happy as well. Uh, oh, but hold on, boys. Not, is this a cynical... Sorry, go on, go on. Uh, well, is this... Eddie Jones but, doing... Well, Eddie is, Jones mate, doing something, yeah. Exactly. I reckon this is a mental test. I reckon he's going... Because Danny Kerr, all the chat, all the time was obviously he's been playing well, so he's you know justified his spot in the England team. But is this Eddie Jones going? He really wants to go on the piss and go. Let's see how he deals with this. We'll bring him into the England camp. Imagine if he didn't play. <laughs> to psyops, it's Eddie Jones psyops. Wait, even more cynically, even more cynically. Imagine that Danny Kerr playing for the Barbarians absolutely tears England to shreds, and he's made to look. Stupid by having never picked him for the last X number of years. Oh, layers, I'm genuinely. Layers. I, that's what I reckon. I reckon something's going on there with all that. I reckon Eddie Jones is thinking. I reckon that's what he's thinking. I reckon he's thinking he could tear us a new one and then imagine the pressure I'm getting from the outside. If Danny Kerr does not play for England against the Barbars on Sunday, it's an absolute disgrace because they've taken his opportunity to play for the Barbars away from him. So you've got you've got to give him. A chance in this England team. When do they name the I, team? Uh, it'd be, it'd be, wait, it would be on th- Thursday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday. It'll be Thursday. Um, I completely agree with you, Rai, but also I think you're letting your own insecurities out on, and you're projecting them onto Danny Kerr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. About, about yeah. Our bar. <laughs> yeah, I know, but no, no, I, I completely agree with you. Jokes aside, yeah, but the guy should have been in the England squad. For a lot longer, like he should have already been in there. He's he's been he's he's integral to the best one of the probably the best attacking side in in um in the Premiership, and he's yeah he's he's such a well balanced nine, incredible kicking game. I yeah I completely agree with what you're saying. Um, let, no let's finish up on the other semi, Leicester Tigers. As kind of predicted, I suppose, managing to beat Northampton Saints in the East Midland matchup at 27 14. Uh, George Ford playing his last game at Welford Road. Yeah, you know, but how impressed were we with his uh, 22 point performance? Yes, I could, mate, George was the man. I also enjoyed his uh, post match uh, talking about Tom, Tom and his, um, his, um, his loss and, and, and what they, and like playing for them, and that was very poignant, very emotional, and I think that was a big, big galvanizer for the for the whole team. But yeah, he was unbelievable. There's some vintage touches. Uh, George with the show and go for that try, uh, mate. He was class. But Northampton could have put them away early. They, they missed so many. I thought they missed a lot of opportunities. Could put, could have put. Uh, oh, that winger. Maybe put oh, yes. Go I felt for him. Go oh, sad. I felt for him, man. He had. Pan hands. Yeah, what Absolutely. happened? I've never seen him do that before. Yeah. Um, so I think I think Saints could have. Well, if they put some of those opportunities away, might have put them put them away early. But uh, again, Leicester just stuck to their game plan and kicked everything, and then played in the right areas of the field as they always have, and and got the job done. Um, but mate, it was a very good game again. Like so many strong performers. 
um, Ludlam doing it, Courtney Laws, Jasper Visa, um, man, so many, so much good code. And it, I know it was a tight game for the first half, but it was a hell of a performance from both sides. We got to see three England fly halves at the weekend, Farrell, Ford, Smith. Who should be starting as fly half in the first test against Australia? My rugby brain says you should start George Ford, seeing as he's the best 10 in the Prem at the moment. With And then you have to play Owen Farrell because he's Owen Farrell. But right now, Mark Smith's Mr. Rugby of England. The ceiling's potentially higher with him and he's still playing very well. But Owen Farrell has to be in the side and going by how Eddie Jones thinks about where he sees that 10-12 relationship going. I think he's going to play Marcus Smith and Owen Farrell. And that will allow... Um, I know we've sort of alluded to maybe Owen Farrell sort of crippling Marcus Smith's creative agency, but realistically, it might take a little bit of pressure off Marcus and allow him to just even play more of his game, if anything, when you've got another kicking option, another game uh game manager just outside you with as much experience and as much te- uh, like skill as Owen Farrell. So I think that's where they're going to go. But uh, yeah, I think I kind of think George Ford should start, but I don't think he will. They've all chucked their hat in the ring, haven't they? Like the yeah. way they all three of them played. Like Owen Farrell was bloody good. He gets right to the line, firing those passes across, putting the big Vincent Cock through. Yeah, like, yeah. Clark. Yeah. I mean, some of the like the way he played, and again, like you said, Ford just handled the game completely differently, but kicked his points was just outstanding. Mm. And Marcus Smith, the running side of things, is exciting to watch, isn't he? So I reckon get Ford at ten, Farrow at twelve, <laughs> and just stick Marcus Smith at fifteen. Get him <laughs> Yeah, why not? Yeah, fair, fair. I like that. Total rugby. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Solved it. Solved it. Uh, finally. Who do we think is going to come out on top and win? I feel like I'm going to go with... I was going to be tight, but I'm going to go with Leicester. I'll go with Saris then. I'll go with Saris. Yeah. As much as I'm, I'm not a massive fan of them, I do sort of like the story about them being relegated, coming straight back up and winning it again. Yeah. It, it's a pretty cool story, isn't it? And It would be, yeah. And they've um, they've done pretty well to get back there. So I'll go Saris. I'll go Saris. We're delighted now to be joined by Australia and La Rochelle star, Will Skelton. Uh, Will, welcome to the show. Firstly, congratulations for being selected oh, to represent the Barbars. Uh, you guys have only been together for a short while. Talk, talk us through your first moments with the Barbars squad. No, thanks, thanks for having me. Um, no, my first time being selected, uh, I'll be able to come actually and uh, our first, uh, we had to fly uh, from Nantes, La Rochelle to Nantes. Oh, sorry, Nantes to, to Nice. And then we got a taxi to Monaco. Um, on entry, it was two beers on the head. Um, thanks to George, <laughs> George Cruz. And he's been telling, uh, he's been sharing all the uh, drinking rules with a lot of the French boys. So now everyone's uh, up to scratch and everyone knows what to do. So, yeah, there's a few, what, EG and empty no, no, vessels. I think you have to accept every beer. A few of the boys don't accept their beers, so they're putting them on the head. So it's going to be a long week, I think, but an enjoyable one. Are those are those Frenchies being careful? Because obviously their head coach is there, or are they being told, listen, boys, this is bar bars. This isn't uh, French camp. This isn't French national camp. Go and enjoy yourselves. Or a couple of them being a bit careful. No, I think it's I think at the start everyone was a bit on edge. Oh, everyone meaning the French boys. There's, there's almost 20 of them here for yeah. a selection camp. Um, we first got the schedule and I'm looking at Cruiser saying, well, we train more here than I do with my club team. But they've, they've cut down a lot of uh, the activities. Um, there's a lot of uh, recoup time, as we say here in France, uh, recovery. So, um, no, it's been, uh, they let the hair down last night in the first night. It was, it was really cool. Is this Cruiser's swan song then? Is this his, is this his last so, run? Yeah, yeah, I oh, think so. It was uh, he, he texted me on Sunday, uh, Barbar's question mark, because uh, we obviously got knocked out on Saturday night. Uh, and I was like, no, you're not selected. As if they'd pick you. But, you know, they, <laughs> they, um, they let him be <laughs> seen. The anti-razzle. I'm in the, I'm in the fucking <laughs> room. Yeah. Hold on, yeah. Just, just so we can get this clear, he's right, he's right, right behind stuff. you, isn't he? He's right here. Slightly one right here. <laughs> I was going to do this in the lobby but I was like nah you know what I'll, we'll do a tag we'll tag team in here 
Yeah. Good man. Good man. <laughs> hey, uh, how loose? Oi, how loose has Tebow got, mate? He gets dangerous on the piss. He does, but apparently he gets to. Uh, it's like the we have it. I have it with Michael Van Paul. I call it the spit face. It's like, yeah, he goes past and then he's just. He doesn't really move. He goes missing. He smoked bombs. So we... <laughs> Who's it? Tebow. Oh, okay. Yeah. What are you talking about? What are you thinking? What are you talking about me? No, no. <laughs> Who's that? <it's fine. laughs> he's on it. He's rattled. He's rattled. He's rattled. <laughs> hey, give, give him a headphone. Get him in. <laughs> They've got headphones. No, he's all right. He's all right. He's not dressed. Nah, Tebow, Tebow, Tebow can get real aggressive as well. Does he? Oh, I haven't seen that side yet. Hopefully not. We're doing uh, a bit of cardio today. Hopefully he's a, he takes it easy on the boss. Oh, <laughs> mate. See, that, that was my that was my like thinking. I was like, you want to go to bar bars and have like just no stress, relax. But yeah. I'm guessing old Fabian Galtier, he's gonna yeah he's gonna be putting you boys because he's using this as a bit of a a warm yeah. test for those French boys. But surely you could just sit on the sideline and be like, listen, mate, I'm I'm here for a bar bars week, not a French training camp. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think um, <laughs> it, it did feel like that when we first got here. But like, like I said, as soon as we um, we sat down, William Servat handing out the beers, we almost knew. Oh yeah, it's, it's the Barbas week. It's almost their week to let their hair down uh, after a long season, and then their, their season starts again when they go to Japan and, and play those two tests. So um, no, we've had a lot of fun the first couple of days, and I think we've got a. A gala night tonight, which is going to be uh, apparently that's uh, it's just bills from there. So we're trying to pace ourselves, but it's there's going to be a long week, man. I, you can tell in my voice I'm, I'm dusty. What's uh, Fabian Galtier been like so far? Is he is he as crazy as he as he looks and seems? Oh, like I said, mate, when we first got that schedule, we Cruzo and I were just like, I think first day, I think so. We arrived Sunday, Monday morning, eight o'clock start. And we're like, hold on a minute. <laughs> well, everyone got over like four. Like, there's no way. <laughs> um, but he's shaved the right down. He's kept it quite simple. He knows that um, obviously the goal is to win on, on Sunday night or Sunday Avo. But um, Barbarians is tradition of having fun, um, creating those bonds. So I think he's um, he's letting his hair down as well. So, uh, well, you're rooming with, uh, with George Cruz. Was there anyone you were hoping you wouldn't room with? When you saw the team sheet, wouldn't room with no man. I'm, the only thing would probably be the language barrier. That's like because I, I understand French, but my I, I'm not very good at speaking it. So that'd probably be the only thing if it was awkward in the room. But no, I'll, I'll be happy to room with anyone in the team. Like uh, like I said, there's some class players here. I think Lips. Um, I think I was supposed to room with Lips, but then Cruzo just changed the he changed the whole. Uh, <laughs> He's the whole room list, and now Lips is by himself. But then I think his cousin's coming uh, to join him from uh, Racing, so they'll be having cover every night, um, which is it's probably good that I'm sleeping in Cruiser. Uh, so, well, a couple of weeks ago, you were in Paris once again with a man of the match performance when La Rochelle won the European Cup uh, against Leicester. Celebration. I mean, we did a whole bit on it in the last show. I mean, it looked like the craziest we've ever seen. Talk, talk us through everything that happened from like post match. Uh, to what we saw in the harbour. Oh, mate, it's, it's, um, it's words can't describe. Like, literally, um, obviously, winning the trophy, and then you have the old, you're, you're just together in the change rooms, beers, cigars out of nowhere. Um, we forgot the goggles. I think we took the goggles last year, and it was a, a bad omen, and we lost. So, no one bought any ski goggles to spray each other with uh, in the sheds. <laughs> Um, so maybe that was why we lost last year, but no, um, it was uh, no, it was it was cool to have a beer together after after the game, and uh, but there was a it was a bit of a layover, so our flight was delayed from Marseille back to La Rochelle, um, so we waited at the airport for like three hours, and it's so we probably got to the airport at one a.m. Um, and our flight home, we didn't get home till like five a.m., and we're thinking, oh. We'll just get home. We'll go back to. We'll go get changed, and we'll meet up again uh, in, in town in La Rochelle. Mate, the airport was jam packed, like ridiculous. I don't know if you saw it. Um, people were waiting there for three, four hours, uh, waiting for us to get there. It was the flares, and um, no, it's the, the sport. 
of this town is, has been amazing and I've loved it uh, from the first time I got there. Um, but then, yeah, it just picked up after that. We uh, had another beer together. We ended up with the market. Uh, it's like a traditional Irish show that they, um, they love to do. French boys, I don't know how they do it. They've got engines on the field and off the field. Like, they fly into, <laughs> we'll have a whole night of drinking and then end up having two dozen oysters and, and two bottles of white wine at 7 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Um, and then obviously after that, it was a bit of family time. I think uh, a lot of the boys, uh, you know, put their visa in and they got stamped, so... We had a few hours at home. I, I got home and spent some time with my boy and my wife. Um, and then we were on again that night. Uh, that's when we got the bus. Um, and yeah, like you've seen the images. It's it's like, a, it's clean off. It's ridiculous. Like um, I, I thought when we first got in there, because we there's, there's almost a road and people were a bit scattered. I'm like, oh, this is not that many people. Like you guys are like, I was like, mate, this is, mate, there's only a hundred people here. There's nothing. People were like sprinting. They were, they were jogging with the bus from like the train station all the way to the port. It was, it was amazing. And then when I was just seeing the people, it was how packed it was and how many people they filled the port. People were jumping in naked into the port, man. It was, it was, it was scenes. Well, I, was, I, was, I, was more, I was more worried about how the bus would get out. Like, what happened? Oh, <laughs> hey, we were speaking about it the other day, and I was I was looking, trying to work out the logistics here. Once that bus is in there, you're stuck in there, mate. Well, what? well they had like hey, there was like uh, I think we had maybe eight or nine security guards around the bus, and obviously it's it's moving very slowly, and it would stop. It would be there'd be there was live oh not live music. There was massive speakers playing on either side of the port. Um, and just giving good vibes. So we were just, you know, glasses on, throwing beers out, watering, bloody spraying people with water, champagne. Um, and then by the end, we're just, we're swamped at the end because it, it funnels into, we had to catch another bus back to the stadium. And we had, a, that's when we had our big sort of uh, party with all the families and the partners. Um, but yeah, chaos, man, chaos. We were, so each in the port, they've got pubs, um, along the along that that waterline there, um, and would be like making eye contact with the uh, because we ran out of beers on the we ran out of beers on the bus. So we're making eye contact with the pub owners, and they're like, we're like, yeah, and they're like, yeah. And you could see them coming. You could see you just see them walking with the beer, holding the beer through, through the puddle. And then we hand out, we fall down. Oh. <laughs> I dropped my glasses. I broke my bloody glasses. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, uh, it was it was a good, it was a great time. Uh, we heard a couple of the lads shame themselves a bit in the La the La Rochelle boys. Can you reveal some names? Any details from the celebrations? We had the I don't know if you know the gendarmerie. It's like uh, it's like the police, but it's the, the, of the region. Um, a few of the boys they obviously loved us, and they'd come and stop by, and they swap they swap shirts. So there was I don't know if you know that the island of Ilderé. There's only one way in, one way out. The bridge. They've got the trophy stopping people for photos with the gendarmerie. Um, <laughs> the gendarmerie uniform, um, and people, yeah, let's take a photo. And they, you know, they got the selfies. Um, I think the the trophy ended up on a on a police boat uh, when we had our Monday uh, our Monday session, uh, which was cool too. Uh, Ehi, e e smoked one early. They hates the drink. No, actually, yeah, uh, he, he stayed he in. Six points, doesn't he? Oh my gosh, he's a uh, uh, he's one of my he's one of my close mates. Yeah, he's a uh, he can just yeah. sit on Coronas and oh man, yeah, we were having pints of mojitos on on that Monday, um, pints of mojitos and Moscow mules, I think, on that on yes, that Monday. Uh, um, but no, yeah, best on ground. Yeah, Yaya was there. Aldrit, mate, he's a fucking machine. Bulgarid, these guys like they don't sleep, like. I don't know how they do it. Like, uh, 24 years old and it's just team no sleep. Uh, they're just by the end, you know, they're just sitting on their wines um, at the end of the thing saying, I'm like, hey, you haven't showered, you haven't, their wife, they've got 50 missed calls from their missus. Like, it's, uh, <laughs> they definitely enjoy their celebration. Very yeah. smart men, very smart men. Involve the police, <laughs> get them on your side. Your it. Exactly. <laughs> Swept under the rug, baby. Exactly. <laughs> Let's move on. Well, beginning of the season, you were one win from four. 
uh, rumours that Roger was going to get sacked. Can you tell us how he and, and you guys managed to turn it around? Uh, yeah, man, it was dark. It was, I think, every... Um, uh, the, the first three games we played, Toulouse at home, Racing away, Claremont away. It was a it was a tough run. You're always going to be, um, we're always going to be struggling there, especially after we had I think we had a three week preseason. Uh, we didn't have any pre match games, um, but yeah, like I said, it was dark. It, you know, Rod set us down after I think we were one and two and six. Uh, we beat Birits at home, and he just said, "Mate, like guys, like we've got to turn this around. Like if I'm gone, if if we keep losing, I'm gone." And then Donick is obviously gone. And then we've got another uh, SNC who's who's just started. Sean Dooley, he's gone. Um, because obviously here it's, it's cutthroat here in France. They, the head coach takes a lot of the brunt. You see how many coaches have moved on um, during during the season. The, the head coaches get sacked and they you know they move on to other gigs uh, straight away. So um, it was a yeah no it was a dark time, but here we managed to uh, climb out of that hole and and <laughs> win something, which was which was nice. Uh, Michael Chaka, who gave you your break at the Waratahs, can you tell us your craziest recollections of of working with Chex? Chex, yeah, no, mate, he was a. Uh, uh, it's funny, he was my my first professional coach at the Tars, and then he moved straight into the Wallabies. So I had him for the Tars and the Wallabies at the time, uh, 2014, 15. Um, no, mate, he was great. He was. Uh, I was actually talking to people. I was talking to Donica, Donica Ryan last week about him. Actually, yeah, just with selection that. Um, just how he, how if he, if I, I played well the week before, and then it would be a big game, and he'd put me on the bench, um, and he'd come up to me and be like, "Mate, it's just a, it's just a gut feel," and I'm, I, I, I literally can't, argue, I can't argue with you there. Like, <laughs> there's no, I can't question your gut. Um, <laughs> whereas I think some coaches, I think coaches nowadays, they would almost pick apart, your, pick apart your game. Um, and that's what something I, I did admire about Czech that he was uh, it was straight up. And I think in, in this in the sport that we're in, um, if a coach likes you, he likes you. Um, he's going to pick what he feels uh, is right for the team. And uh, there's no point uh, going back. So I think that's one story rugby wise. And then he always had some crazy uh, pre I think like pre match. Um, motivational speeches but like uh we had a few i think before our final in 2014 um it was, it was actually really cool he got a, a bag of golf clubs um with had all our names on it and it, the the name of uh had the name of the club and he handed it one to each player uh and and the theme behind it was just to let the club go um just to release and um and then straight away so we'd go and we'd take a golf swing and we just literally let the club go. We were smashing the clubs. Like the whole change room at ANZ was, mate, there was pieces of golf clubs everywhere. A few <laughs> shafts were out. Um, so that's another story yeah, that, that, that was uh, that was something that was awesome that, that Czech did for us. What's Ron guy like as a coach? Mate, he's good. He's really good. Yeah, he's... Um, he's what, how, long is he, how long has he been doing now? Eight years? Nine years? I think he's still, he's still trying to find... Um, what I don't know his his methods, the coaching. It's he's very hands on, um, but no, yeah, he's uh, he's finding his way. He's aggressive little man, isn't he? Yeah, it can be, yeah. Oh, mate, it was like I said, it was it was dark at the start of the season. I mean, you should see half time the weekend. Like we played awful the first half, and, and he let us know um, against Toulouse. Uh, we managed to scrape back a few more tries. Just, we just weren't good enough, but. Yeah, he um, he's definitely a passionate coach. Wears his heart on his sleeve. He's, uh, I guess he's been around so long. He's he's played in all those big games, so he's always draws on those experiences for us uh, when when those games come ahead. So, no mate, it's it's awesome working with him. Uh, the boys love him, and uh, yeah, I think he's on, he's on board for a few more years too. Now, the reason I asked you about Rono Guy is because I remember I was, I think I was maybe running what was I think Glasgow was injured when you boys came up to Glasgow and he was on the sideline at half time just before the ref come in, absolutely seething. Like, you know, he gets the old bright red face and he's yeah. like, fucking cheating bastards. Chill <laughs> <laughs> out. Um, honestly, wait yeah. for the ref to come in because he's like, fucking cheating bastard. 
It's a, it is a French thing, though. It's just some, yeah, you know, they have the head coach on the sideline. Or maybe it's a European thing to have the head coach on the sideline because I, I've never had it before at the Tars. I'm, I'm very lucky. That, I'm glad that Czech wasn't on the sideline because he'd be exactly the same. You know what I mean? It's like I said, he's a passionate coach. I think I don't know if you saw the incident with Urios. Um, yeah. Yeah, when we played Bordeaux, mate. Just you know, <laughs> how how clean off is that? That one coach can slap another coach, and it's all recorded on live TV. It's it's crazy. Yeah. It's mental. Well, going through the sort of winning culture on both sides, as you said, uh, as Brian just asked you with Larisha and with Saracens, uh, how important were those Saris mid-season sort of lash-up trips to the for the culture and 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 what was best for the squad? Very important. I think it was uh, it gave us something to look forward to off the field. I remember they'd always tell you about a month uh, or six ah. weeks out before the before the trip. Um, and say where we're going, a slideshow of um, what was to come. And that, that just, you know, that revved the boys up. So then we had like a block of six six to eight games and we're thinking, all right, we got to get through Northampton, oh shit, Newcastle away. And then boys <laughs> exit away and then we're off with kind of Ibiza or, you know what I mean? It's, it was, uh, no, it's always a, it's always a special time. Uh, and it's good, it's a good time to, to build those connections, build those relationships uh, during a, a tough, long season. Best trip for you? Best trip? Uh, I think my first trip to San Antonio was a... Yeah, that was... like I literally arrived two weeks. I, I came on loan for eight weeks. Um, uh, we played sail. Uh, sail at home. Then sail away. And then they're like, oh, yeah, we've, got, we've, we've got a trip going for three days. And I'm thinking... A trip? What do you mean a trip? We've we, we got a training camp or something. Like, no, I, I was like, should I pack my boots? Do I? And then it was literally 4 a.m. on the bus to Gatwick. Um, and then I wasn't a big drinker. I, I literally, I think that was the first time I ever got hungover with the boys yeah. here, uh, in my life. So it was a, a new experience. Thanks, Carlo Skulk Burger, for feeding me pints all night. <laughs> He can drink, mate. Oh my gosh, he can. <laughs> he can drink. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was a great trip. I had fun with Cruzo. Um, no, yeah, it was a uh, yeah. I think San Antonio for me. That was that was that was awesome. Well, so but down at top when you were at the Tars and you guys won it, was that was that not a big drinking culture there? Being in Sydney, it was. I, I, mate, I didn't drink, so I, I literally. Oh, you just were straight up, just did, yeah. Didn't drink. I, I was yeah. So like we, I, it was yeah. He, when you're not involved with uh, on that side of things, you you see it, some things in different lights. Like, uh, like the memories I built these last two nights with, with some of these French boys with Cruzo, uh, Lips. You know, those are the ones I'll have for life. You know, um, yeah. and there's I'm not your friend. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys see, <laughs> not your if you guys see the the barbers put up the picture of Cruzo. With are holding the badge. <laughs> but it's the other side. <laughs> Go on the Instagram, mate. Go on the Instagram. It's Cruzo. How look how dusty it is. You can see it in his eyes. <laughs> Those who've done the rounds on our WhatsApp right. group store. For, for the badge, boy. For the badge. He's freaking holding the Gilbert sign. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just zoom in on his eyes. <laughs> look how dusty. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. That's oh. what I was saying. No, when I turned up for my first night at the Barbars, I genuinely thought Steve Kitsoff was cross-eyed because he was that steaming. His eyes were going oh. all over the shop. I was like, oh, I must bless him. He must have cross eyes. Oh, <laughs> it was can't be having so that. Blind. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, slowly. Oh, <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. No, he, what are you talking about? He looks pretty fresh. No, he's right. He's good. I, like I said, like I, on the way home, we were both like, hey, we're in fucking great, we're in great nick right now. Like, uh, <laughs> not great nick. Not great, sorry. <laughs> we're great. We feel really good. We had a really a nice burger down at uh, Tip Top. You had a Tip Top, right? Nah. You want to get down to Stars and Bars, though? That's good. Stars and Bars? Mm. Yeah. Is it good? Jimmy's? Jimmy's is good. Yeah. Jimmy's. Oh, right, right, right. Send us a few spots tonight. We'll. Oh, I will. I, I will do. I'll, I'll drop you a text. 
Uh, just quickly, I know you're running out, and we don't want to get you in trouble for 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 being no, yeah, um, please for for being <laughs> late. So we'll just do a quick fire round. Um, first things first, we love our Aussies on here. We've had the Honey Badger, Nick White, James O'Connor. Who's the best value Aussie that we should get on? You can get hoops if you can get hoops. You gotta get them. But oh, mate, Tanyelo Tupo, right now he oh. is, mate. He's unfiltered. He's unfiltered. He's mate. He's 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 the one. Get the tongue and Thor on, mate. He's good value. He has some good stories too. Uh, toughest team you've ever played against in your career? Only because oh, obviously you play the All Blacks. Um, oh, it's it's so fresh. Toulouse has been. A challenge for me in the last two years. We haven't beaten. I think we've played them six times, and we've lost every game. It's uh, Dupont, mate. He's a freak. Uh, for me, uh, probably in the last two years, Toulouse has been in the, in the toughest. Best player you've played against? Owen. Yeah, he was. He's a freak, mate. And then once you get to know him as well, you see <coughs> what makes him tick. How competitive he is. How driven he is. Uh, it makes it even. Yeah, it makes that. Decision even clearer that he's yeah, he's one of the toughest I've played against. Uh, worst enemy in rugby. Worst um, enemy in rugby. Dieting, nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Big man yeah, doesn't have enemies. Yeah. Too nice. Ryan Wilson. <laughs> Ryan Wilson. <laughs> Cruzo is screaming that. <laughs> no, not biggest pest. Biggest <laughs> enemy. <laughs> you are a pest, though, Ryan. Oh my gosh. Nah, you know, yeah, but I love it. I love it, mate. And I actually want to ask Gus, hey, mate, is Ryan actually a, is he a good bloke or is he just a is he a prick? <laughs> no, he's like, nah, bro, he's actually a, he's actually a top. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, thank god, damn it. Oh. Everyone's a good bloke. I've, I've met like coming on this tour, like Crusoe's just been frothing over Charlie one, like he's he's. <laughs> <laughs> every, 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 I, like, how good, look, how good looking is he? Mate, you see how good is. looking, dude. <laughs> That's what every, I'll be like, oh, he's huge. He should play lock. He's about six, seven, mate. He's a freak. Yeah, he's just, they're such good boys, you know, like, um, but yeah, every, I just go, mate, Charles, he's a good bloke. Hey? He's, oh, mate, he's, he's unbelievable, Cruzo. He's just, he's a lover. Like, <laughs> got that accent as well. Oh yeah, look at that. Still on there, actually. <laughs> Three players in the cab with you for the ultimate piss up. Uh, ultimate piss up. Fuck. Fuck, that's a tough one. Do I say Cruiser because he's here? <clears throat> Not Cruiser. Fuck, I've had some good nights with Cruiser though. Cruz, Baz. Um, keep me out of this so you can keep another name. No, nah, I like you. You're, I don't you're always you're like the balance, you know that like <laughs> mate. You are West. We gotta go. We gotta be yeah. right, so Let's let him go. Year. Okay, we'll have to do our right show. George, quickly, your top three. Whilst we got you there, George, your top three. Um, Baz, uh, Richard Barrington, Duncan Taylor. Jackson Ray, and we would drive that car over Ryan Wilson. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm joking, well, Ryan. I'm joking. Oh, I'm like, uh, don't, say that. don't say that. You're in it now. You're in it. In it. Uh, on that wonderful note, so that you guys don't get too many fines uh, for being late, a huge thank you to uh, Will. Uh, good luck with this week of trading and, and the game against England. And as always, thanks to Ryan and to Max. And we'll see you all next week. Cheers, boys. Cheers, Big Willie. Take it easy. Get out. Cheers, of here. Boys. Cheers guys.